I am so excited to be here again with you. Um, ooh, we have a show today. We have a show, people. And uh, if this is your first time coming over to the conversation, uh, thank you. I'm inspired by you. And I hope that there's some reciprocity here for you. I hope that something that is shared today is also an inspiration to your life. Uh, something that you hear may open you up and uh, reveal the truth of who you are just by being present with me. You know, by truly tuning in, uh, but by not spectating this podcast, but by being truly a part of this conversation. And uh, today, man, we have a show. I really wanted to talk about the experience of meditation today. I know a lot of people talk about how to meditate or why to meditate. And those conversations are important and valid. Uh, but as a practitioner of meditation for some years now, I've experienced so many different genres of it, so many different um, modes and ways to, to really be still and listen. And none of them have brought me the same experience. Um, a lot of the times two experiences do not happen in a row or meaning I don't relive a meditation experience another time. They're usually very uh, distinct and separate and in the moment. So I really wanted to talk about the experience of meditating um, over just telling you what to do and how to do it. Um, I have a YouTube channel and there is a video that's out there about meditation as well that's pretty powerful. And so I invite you to uh, look me up on YouTube, Oracle Beatty Smith, and I'm sure I'm the only one there <laughs> with that name. And uh, yeah, there's a there's a video out there about meditation amongst other videos about other things. So um, that one may help you in a more instructional way uh, to actually be able to apply the steps of meditation, uh, silent meditation, um, through the tips and the understanding of why each a step is important and you know really get an idea of why you're meditating right that's a great video for that but today I just want to really go through some experiences and uh, talk with you uh, maybe about your experience so as you know um, I love your feedback I love hearing from you so my email is evolving oracle at gmail.com you can send me an email and tell me about your experience and uh, any notes that you have from this show and maybe I can share uh, that with your permission on a later episode so today we are in conversation about experiencing the realm of stillness let's get started Okay, so I wanted to have this conversation because this has been a week that I've really committed to my meditation practice. Sometimes life gets good and you know, you wanna get up and you wanna go and you get home and you're tired and you wanna sleep <laughs> or the day is moving and you don't stop. And so meditation can sometimes, if not um, placed into your life as a ritual, or as you know as important as you know eating and sleeping if you don't put taking this time for yourself in your life in that way it can get away from you because a lot of the times like prayer and other th practices that we have especially when dealing with our spirituality um, they can ebb and flow because we ebb and flow and you know it depends on your faith in those particular practices and how they serve you being in flow. Um, I assure you that meditation is a part of my ability to stay in flow. 
And when I do not do my practice, man, do I pay for it later. Like this week, I've, I've really had mornings where I'm just waking up and I was just so troubled. You know, like my body is troubled. It's all kinds of energies and my mind is troubled. Just thoughts, just running, you know, none of which serves me. Right. Your 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 morning chaos does not serve you. It does not fuel you. It does not do any of that. It distracts you. And it really also makes you aware, though, you know, to the positive that you're distracted, that there's something going on in your energy that must be cleared, that there's something going on uh, in your momentum that is contradicting who you really are. So the body and the mind um, are not who we are. You know, I know that I'm not my body or my mind. Like if I was, if I were the thoughts that I think, oh my God, right? And sometimes, you know, and most of the time, and for a lot of us, we think we are what we think. We actually really believe what we think about ourselves. We truly stand in what we think about others and the world. I mean, those values seem to be the truth. And because thoughts, period, are not who we are. They're just phenomena that passes by like any other phenomena in the in the universe. Um, we kind of have to separate ourselves a little bit. You know, we have to pull back from the thinking sometimes. It is not always in our best interest. And the same with our bodies. You know, our bodies are magnets, you know, to everything. I mean, on the inside of our bodies, we store all this metal from the foods and the toxins. You know, on the outside of our body, um, our skin carries all of these germs and, you know, things from what we touch and where we sit. And energetically, you know, as well, we just really are attractive. You know, and we're attracted to other energy. We're attracted to, um, we resonate with things based on kind of where we are mentally, right? So if you're kind of shaken mentally or super attached to your thoughts mentally, then that means you're going to be super attached to what your body is physically feeling as well. And then boom, you're in chaos because none of it is who you are and you really need to be standing in who you are in order to be really able to deal with the chaos in order to be able to deal with the thoughts that come or the energy you interact with you know when you are present in your true self you can decide you know you are a decision maker you and you decide in truth because when you're present to who you are you're very kind to yourself compassion is natural Love is your, you know, your autopilot setting. Um, optimism isn't, is, is there, but not even as a necessity because optimism says that I trust. You know, it doesn't say that I'm going to get what I want. It says that I trust that it's possible. You know, so um, by the way, you know, I record these podcasts at home and there is a large plane flying overhead right now and uh, welcome to L.A. So I hope that the ambient noise of the planes that pass by uh, may be soothing to you as we go through this. So, yeah. So if I go back to what I was talking about after that brief interruption of people flying somewhere, I really you know want to just stress that you're not your thoughts and you're not your mind you know you are what is observing all of those things right like for example even with the plane the thought came that this is an interruption right but why why is it an interruption why do i need to uh interrupt the conversation because my mind thinks that planes are an interruption when really it's just something that happened, that occurred. But I know that it's really because I've listened to so many, you know, talks on how to podcast and it's like, oh, the sound is so important and you don't want any noise and you need this, you need that. And so I have the noise counseling headphones. I have the, you know, the setup in my, in my house with all of the foam and I have all of these different things. So because I put all these structures in place, you know, the plane is being disrespectful. (laughs) 
<laughs> in my mind. And so I'm immediately alerted. There is disrespect happening right now. And it is called the plane flying over you while you are recording this episode of the conversation. And it's just not true. It's just really a thought. It was a thought that came up. Hey, the plane is a distraction. And I could be like, well, not really. The plane is just minding its business. And I'm going to keep recording this podcast. So is it a distraction? Or did I listen to the thought and then distract the podcast? Was the plane a distraction? Or did I listen to the thought that the plane is a distraction? Agree with it and then distract this podcast for the last three minutes? right? That's what um, the mind will do to you. That's what the mind is doing to us all day. It's like, squirrel, hey, you made this decision that you didn't want any noise in your audio months ago. I'm retrieving and bringing to you that thought right now because this is the opposite of what you said you wanted, right? And so the mind like, and it doesn't come off like that. There's not this stream of wisdom that says, this thought is attached to that and this thought is attached to that and this thought is because you believed in that and this thought is because you said that and this thought is because you're controlling and this thought is because you don't believe in yourself and this thought there's no like manual coming along with our thoughts saying what their intentions are right you, you don't get all of the data if you don't like sit back and say why did i have that thought which is what I call self-inquiry, which I love, but that's not the topic today. The, th- the topic really is meditation. And, but I, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to bring you in to the understanding so that as I talk about the experiences of meditation, you'll be with me. So please kind of stay with me if you can um, as I kind of go through what's happening in the phenomena of thinking you know, at a level of how thoughts persuade us to believe that it's us and not just thoughts. Like the thinking takes away our ability to notice that we can choose the thoughts that we follow in our daily lives at all times. One, you want to get your brain to where you're having less thought, which is a tool of meditation. But two, you always want, you also want to get your brain to allow you a moment to see the thought fully to be able to choose. Thoughts usually make us feel very urgent. It's right now. This is happening right now. You have to think this now. You have to decide from what I'm showing you now. And the brain, (laughs) funny part, the brain doesn't actually care if you do. It's just doing its thing, right? The brain and thinking, uh, your mind does not really care what you do with what it gives you. Its job is just to give you what you stored, to give you what is emerging, to give you what's possible at the level that you believe in possibility. So if your brain and your mind is giving you the same bank of thoughts all the time, it may be because you do not believe in more possibilities than what your brain is offering you, which is another reason to meditate, right? So as we think about how thoughts work and we think about Um, our own experience of thinking and then we insert the truth that we're actually not the thoughts it really gives a good you know testimony to why we should practice meditation on a regular basis and then if you go into the mind I mean I mean the body the body is a whole nother thing that we're not that we think that we are that stores information from us, that is a tool for us, that is neutral, does not care what we choose, is just a willing vessel to go about whatever business we, you know, agree to go about it. The body is like, I'm here, where do you want to go? You know, I mean, and so 
it doesn't feel like that though. The body, you know, as it stores things and as we begin to identify with what we've stored in our body and not release it on a regular basis, i.e. meditation, right? Then we become identified with those feelings. We've become identified with that pain in our chest. We become identified with that soreness in our knee. We become identified with the, you know, lower back issues. We become identified with the way that we look, with the weight, with the lack of weight, with with the features of our face. We become identified with all of these things that are ever and always changing. I mean, the phenomena of the body is a whole vibe. It's a whole thing to discuss. It's a whole thing to study. It's a whole thing to understand. I mean, it's one thing to just understand how thoughts, you know, work in the mind. But then to look at the brain and how all of that works, because the brain is not your mind. The brain is a part of your body. You know, your mind is a whole nother energetic system happening. I mean, who we are as human beings is so dynamic. It's like, oh, how deep can we go, you know? So I didn't come to go that deep today. I came to talk to you about <laughs> meditation and experiences of meditation, but it is, uh, I could not go into that without really opening you up first to say, hey, I'm not talking about, you know, some, you know, silent sitting that's just going to change your life. No, you got to understand what you're sitting with and what you're sitting for and, you know, the, the point and the the goal of the whole thing. So um, you are not your thoughts, boo. You are not your mind. You know, you are so much more than that. And that's so much more that you are has the mind and the body as tools to do your business the truth of who you are does have business here and if you could utilize the construct of things like meditation to get really back to the essence of who you are then your mind and your body will be pleased to serve that essence you know you'll hear a lot when you when you're investigating meditation and listening to different people's views you'll hear people say your mind is your enemy don't listen to what it says your mind is your enemy well your mind is your enemy until it's not until you worked with your mind to align it with your heart so that it is a tool to be used by the essence of who you are to do that business that you came to do in the world right to, to do the thing that you came to, to do to be the being that you came to be that mind really wants to align with your heart because that's when it's used at its highest level this body really wants to be the temple of your of your essence i mean it's really why we have this you know truly phenomenal like experiment called humanity i mean like we are dynamic AF. I mean, like we are so special. So we were not though, if we think that we're just mind and body, if we think we're just our past, if we think we're just our emotions, if we think we're just our habits, then that doesn't seem so special. You know, that seems like something to control because there's nothing new or creative coming out of that. But if we can use these systems and these tools like meditation, to really open us up, up, ourselves up to who we are, then man, we will be cooking with grease and lighting fire all over this planet and all over this universe, showing up as the true light, showing up as the co cosmos of who we really are. So that is kind of the preface, you know, of where I dive into meditation, you know, I can't really go in unless I know that I have to go in and first undo my agreement with thought and body as who I am and step into the true self so that I can then address my mind and body in love, compassion, understanding, uh, healing, releasing, and allowing myself to truly emerge for the day. Uh, as a being of God, a daughter of God, and uh, a purposed uh, human vessel for the greater good of all involved to be here to do the business mm, that I came to do. All right. So after this, we are going to talk about those experiences. Be right back. 
So real quick, I wanted to give everyone listening to the podcast an opportunity to work with me. So I am a life coach as well as for uh, an inspirational speaker. You know, it, it's hard sometimes for me to choose an identity in this world. Um, so ultimately, I'll just say this. I want to work with you. I want to work with you. I want to work with your group. I want to work with your mission. Uh, there is so much that we can learn from each other and so much that I'd like to share through me that I've learned, not just from my journey, uh, but really from my time spent in the presence of all. And ultimately, what I want to work with you on is the power of I designing your own identity, the power of actually deciding who you are based on what is already within you, not having to necessarily pull anything from the outside of you first to make these decisions, but to pull from the values at the core and the essence of who you are. And then from there, really help you create a life uh, that you can enjoy that you know, is not a full of meaning that stops you, but that is full of meaning that drives you forward. So if you're interested in working with me or having me come to speak to your group or organization, absolutely reach out to me at evolvingoracle at gmail.com. And I would love to be a part of what you have going on and help you design a life uh, that you know uh, you put into place because it looks, feels, and sounds like the true you. Back to the show. Okay, so let's talk about these experiences in meditation. Okay, so uh, yeah, this week I, I really have had mornings where I'm like, okay, something isn't right here. You know, I'm troubled. And so sometimes you know i have to go and do a guided meditation because you know the mind can really be on one and when that's the case you know i don't try to pretend like i don't need help you know asking for help is normal it's why we pray uh it's why we ask for help in our daily lives and so asking for help uh, in meditation could come through a guided meditation. I am selective on who I let guide me because I don't necessarily need anyone programming me with other thoughts. I think meditation should really be a time of getting out of thinking. So I usually uh, work with a few guides that allow me to um, focus on allowing the thoughts to pass and getting to the clearing that you know reconnects me with my divinity and loosens me from the train of thought uh, or from being trained to think and so muji uh, is a guru uh, in rishikesh india rishikesh india that i adore and i really enjoy his meditations because they're no nonsense um, they're like, listen, get out of your own way. That isn't you. Let it pass. You know, and I like, I enjoy that. So uh, this week I've had to really solicit some Muji <laughs> meditations in the morning uh, to, you know, retrace my steps back to me. Now, you know, a lot of people can wake up in that confusion and think, oh, something's wrong with me or what's wrong with me and that's like the first thought that you want to not believe and realize this isn't me this is just an option this isn't who I am this thought is just an option I could believe it I don't have to you know there's nothing wrong with me I choose not to believe it there's nothing wrong with me this is a normal phenomena there is energy there are thoughts I have a brain they're wanting attention normal normal Let's just get back to the true self. Let's get 
a handle on these thoughts. Let's help these thoughts pass by getting to who we are. And that's the experience of meditation normally for me is to allow things to pass. Like I go into meditation so that I can let thoughts pass. I can let emotions release. I can let feelings happen in a safe place. Uh, It keeps me from projecting on other people because I released it before I even interacted with anyone that day. Right. It keeps me from, you know, having this train of thought of negativity if I am taking on something new because I've already let all those thoughts pass. They've had their share of time and I've gotten back to the truth that I don't know what's happening and I'm fine with that. I don't know, you know, what tomorrow will bring and I'm fine with that because at least I am present in me. So it's all of these kinds of uh issues that come up when you're in chaos that a lot of people are just afraid to sit still long enough to feel you know it's like oh i'm not meditating so i have to get up this isn't working you need you see here do you hear all these thoughts in my head i don't want to listen do you feel all these feelings in my body i don't want to feel them that can't be meditation everyone who's doing meditation is sitting quietly and their eyes are closed and they got this grin on their face and that ain't what happened well That's not what happens for most people (laughs) when they meditate. So, you know, one, please know that the experience of meditation, especially for a beginner or someone who's been practicing for a long time like me, you know, is dynamic. It's never the same. It's always different. And uh, it's really to help you, you know, first of all, realize that you are not your thoughts in your body. If you sit with those thoughts and sit with your body long enough to let those feelings come up, that's what true processing is, you know, to actually sit with it and listen to it and not hold on to it, but to let it pass. That's processing to feel, you know, the tightening of your left side and, and, and allow yourself to breathe into that tightening and, and not to feel wrong for having us the, the sensation, but to breathe into until it passes. That's processing. Where does it go? Does it matter? You know, what what um, what what now? Freedom. You know, like what if it's, you know, a lot? Well, then lay there, sit there, experience it. It, The more chaos that wants to come out of you, the more time you should be sitting in meditation. You know, if you plan for a 30 minute meditation and at the end of that meditation, you are still overwhelmed, that means the next day you need an hour. You know, if you do it for an hour every day for a week and you are more and more overwhelmed that means there's so much that's wanting to come out of you there's so much that's wanting to rise from you that maybe you need to take a little retreat and do three days full on of just sitting in silence and sitting with yourself and letting that stuff come out you know maybe there's a journal nearby and water and raw food raw you know fruit and vegetable to allow your body to not be using its energy for other things but to use it to help you process all of the chaos that's in your systems. Because your mind and your body are systems and they can get overwhelmed because they're not you. You cannot be overwhelmed. You are always in peace. You always know the answers. You are always directly and divinely connected to God. But when the mind and the body are not connected and being operated by the heart in this system, you know, which is the connection point of you to your systems, to your physical systems. When your mind and your body are not integrated into your heart space, into your unconditional love, then they store things and they wreak havoc and they get bossy. I always like to say, um, and this was something that came in my meditation this morning, it was like, you know, your mind is not your enemy if you're practicing love your mind is the enemy of the person that's not practicing love your mind is your enemy when you're afraid your mind is your enemy when you're greedy your mind is your enemy when you're a liar your mind is your enemy when you are impoverished your mind is your enemy when you refuse to act your mind can definitely be your enemy and so is your body oh your body can turn on you 
when you have no movement, when you have no flow, when you are holding on to grudges and abuse. Oh, your body will show up for you as an enemy so quickly. But that's not the intention of the mind and the, and the body. The intention is to be a temple, to be the mind, to be the conduit of all of your creativity. You know, to your mind to be the, 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 the point of where all things come together and, and create and manifest. Your body, the vehicle of these manifestations. Your body, the experiencer of these manifestations, not your enemy. But because we identify with all of the different things that we've experienced and we stored in our mind and body as truth and then continue to live our lives on the cycle of those false knowings, well then, yeah, meditation's going to be a little hard for you. Until it's not. And there's days that you're going to wake up and, you know, your thoughts from yesterday and your desires and your wants and your, your, the things that you haven't achieved or the things that you're afraid are coming or whatever the confusion is. When that stuff bubbles up for you, you don't want to run away from being still. It's what you actually want. Be still and know who's God in you. Be still and let what's not you pass away. Go up on the mountaintop of your own life and sit with yourself until you reclaim the truth of who you are and you reclaim the truth of your existence. Because it is in the beautiful silence that we really find the divinity that is running this show. And when you can find the divinity within you that is running the show, at all times, even when the show is a lesson through the pain that you identify with. You know, who you are does not seek to hurt you and does not hurt you. Who you are seeks to wake you up when you are sleeping and who you are seeks to lead you when you are awake. Who you are is always always present and always willing but the mind and the body that is not being utilized properly within the system will attack you it will attack what you know it will interrupt your life it will be the distraction of all distractions but this is again a neutral thing it's not attacking you because of you. It's not attacking you because you're bad or attacking you because you're wrong or you did that thing. It's the way that it is. It's a natural phenomena. You know, your survival mechanisms are going to kick in and they're going to outweigh and overrule your ability to thrive. It's going to outweigh and overrule your freedom because this world does have within it a third dimension of reality that allows it to be in opposition and to create these dualistic experiences. That is part of how we even get to experience what we do want to manifest is that we also have to experience what we do not want to manifest. And so meditation and the experience of it is what allows you to kind of see what's going on with you when you're interacting with others if you're sitting with yourself and you're feeling all of these feelings and all of these thoughts what do you think is happening when you're interacting with others doing it with you allows you to really decide is this how I want to think and feel when I'm with others and if it's not then you have the ability while you are alone to listen to those things separate yourself Claim the truth in the presence of your at your true divinity, realizing that there is nothing happening here that I am not allowing or that I have not created. But I do not allow these false creations. I do not allow these lower manifestations to be used beyond this point of discipline. I don't allow these things to be used in my life. I refuse to project these things onto other people. Instead, I am going to deal with them here and now 
as a loving observer of what I've created and allowing it to pass and process through me so that the true me may be what I take into the world today. My experience as a meditation is all about holding myself and getting back to me. It's never about um, what I'm feeling, although when there's a lot going on, there's a lot going on. But then there's other times when my experience of meditation is just so peaceful and loving and all my chakras light up. You know, I'll put my hand over my heart and my hand over my belly and I can just feel the energy, you know, churning through my body. You know, I surrender to my life. I imagine beautiful things. Uh, when I get into that vibration where I know that I am me and that I am not uh, in the throes of my feelings and in the throes of my thoughts, then I'm able to tell my brain and show my brain these, you know, e these visions of beauty where everyone is blessed. You know, when you get to a certain point in your meditation practice where you, you know, locate the love within you, that love shoots right to the brain, lights it up like a, like a firecracker. And the beautiful things uh, that every, any, any beautiful thing you can imagine just pours out onto your body. And then you take that into the world. Right. So there's like, OK, I'm meditating so that I do not take my chaos into the world. I'm meditating so that I can, you know, slow down and uh, be aware of the thoughts that I'm thinking and choose wisely. You know, I'm meditating to slow down as I'm, you know, going through my daily life or I'm meditating to, you know, pursue bliss. I'm meditating to get to a blissful state so that I can vision my life from the place of stillness and inform the world of who will be moving forward when this moment is over, right? So it's what are you meditating for? What are you experiencing? And a lot of the times, you know, the only reason I can say that I know that there's these different modes of meditation is because I've spontaneously experienced them all. You know, I don't necessarily go in and say, this will be a bliss meditation because I can tell if there's chaos there. <laughs> or I'll go in saying, this will be a processing meditation and there's nothing to process and this joy just comes over me. Or I'll go in strategically saying, okay, you know, we're healing this today. I'm going to go and I'm going to, you know, look at my body and I'm going to breathe love on it. And I have an intention you know, I am stepping into my power as a true self and I'm working with my systems um, with an intention, you know, to move me forward. There's all these different we reasons and ways and possibilities when you meditate. And all those, these are a few of mine. These are a few of my experiences. These are a few of my perspectives and my perception, you know, is, you know, mine. Go explore with meditation for yourself and, and build your own perception of it. Build your own experiences from it. Get connected to yourself, you know, as much as you can. Find the guided meditations that you enjoy. Listen to uh, binaural beats. Uh, they're great for meditation. Or singing bowls. They're also great for meditation. Um, or gong sounds. Great for meditation. Or om. Listening to a mantra. Um, that aligns with it. It's great for meditation. And sometimes people do mantra as meditation because it's another, it's a mental meditation, but the sound also vibrates in the body. And so it's a mind body connection kind of meditation. And depending on what you're meditating brings in that spiritual true essence part of it. So there's mantra meditation, there's pranayama, which is breathing meditation. There is, you know, stillness meditation, which is what I've talked about mostly here um but it is there's so many different ways and different things to explore uh to really figure out what practices and rituals will be best for you and um it's a life work it's a life journey it's not something that ends uh it's something that when you begin you never want it to when you begin meditation and truly take it on and see all the things that it provides for your life you'll never want to let it go I haven't, I haven't. <laughs> yeah.
And, um, but be still and know, be still and know that you're special and, uh, that meditation is here to serve you, that you are not your mind or your body, that they are systems that want to support you. Uh, but when you are out of alignment with your true self, um, meditation calls you forward to create that alignment so that you begin processing the things uh, that no longer serve your systems and moving into the bliss state that you so deserve as a birthright to experience while you are here on earth alive and well. I think that's our ending today. I think we got some good content. I'd love to hear back from you guys uh, and answer any of your questions, uh, support you in any way that I can. Uh, and if you're looking for someone to uh, dive deeper into the identity that you've created, helping you unbox that uh, and uh, create something spontaneously as it emerges from the truth of who you are, then I'd love to be on that journey with you and uh, talk to you more about it. You know how to reach me. And until next time, I love you. Take care.